everybody, welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today I have your WWE Stomping Grounds 2019 full show review and results for you guys. How these videos work is I'm going to run down the entire car from start to finish, breaking down all the matchups, telling you everything that happened, what I liked about it, what I disliked about it, and giving you my personal opinion about the matches themselves and everything in between. Going into this show, guys, I didn't have very high expectations for it, but you know what? Let's dive into this card and see if it was better than I expected. Starting things off with the pre-show, guys, we did have one matchup on the pre-show, and it was the triple threat match for the Cruiserweight Championship between Akira Tozawa, Drew Gulak, and the champion Tony Nese, and I did not get to see this full matchup. I turned on the WWE Network at like 5.45 Central PM time. I didn't know the main show would start at 6. I only caught maybe the last four or five minutes of this matchup, but it was very impressive. I thought that all three guys did a fantastic job. You know, the Cruiserweights always tear it down here, and no different here on the pre-show. It sucks that they're on the pre-show. I hate that title matches are on the pre-show. You know, it really devalues the championship, but this matchup was great, and I really enjoyed it, and Drew Gulak, Drew Gulak does get the win here over Akira Tozawa and Tony Nese, and we have a brand new Cruiserweight champion in Drew Gulak, and I'm very excited for this, man. I, I really like Drew Gulak as a character. His in-ring stuff used to be a bit boring, but if you put him with the right guys and give him the right matchups, I think that he can shine as a champion, and he has a great personality and character, so I'm happy for Drew Gulak, and I'm interested to see where he goes from here with the tr Cruiserweight Championship. So the main show did start off with the Raw Women's Championship, guys. My girl Becky Lynch taking on Lacey Evans, guys. And we well, coming into this, you guys know that I was, I'm was i not a big fan of Lacey Evans. I don't like her character. I don't like her uh, her ability in the ring. She's very green. She's not very good. She's uh, sort of botchy. She sandbags her opponent. She, I don't know. She's just not, uh, not my favorite wrestler, you can say. But coming in here, she didn't even deserve this title match. She already lost to Becky Lynch once. And uh, she didn't need a rematch. I mean, she didn't even earn the first matchup. So anyways, moving on, guys. I really was disappointed going into this match that we had another rematch here, but they didn't put on a trash match. I thought the match was solid for what it was. Nothing out of the ordinary, nothing over the top craziness, amazing, or nothing like that. But Becky Lynch does deliver here. Lacey Evans didn't look like complete crap. I think there was uh, one, uh, there were between one to three botches in this matchup, but overall, I think both women delivered, and uh, I enjoyed this matchup. I found myself engaged with it, and that is a good thing, but Becky Lynch does retain the Raw Women's Championship, which I was very happy for. We do not need Lacey Evans winning the title. I think Becky is red hot. The crowd was chanting, Lacey sucks. The, the crowd was chanting, you can't wrestle at Lacey. The, I mean, they were on fire for Becky, and it was a good way to open the show up, and uh, I appreciated it. So Becky Lynch does retain her Raw Women's Championship. Thank Christ. Next up, guys, we have the tag team match between my boy Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn taking on the New Day Big E and Xavier Woods here in a tag team match. And I, I think, I, I'm pretty sure I said in my predictions video that this matchup could be a potential match of the night candidate. And my God, these four guys deliver, man. What an epic tag team match, man. I love tag team wrestling so very much. It's so beautiful to see four guys who have great chemistry. They know what the hell they're doing. They get in the ring, they tell a story, and they dominate, man. They came right out of the gate swinging just hella hard, hella fast, you know, great impact, great stuff in this matchup. I mean, good lord, man. Love this matchup to death, and I did predict Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn to win. I said that this will be a great stepping stone for them. If you're going to put them in the tag team division, you need to do so with a bang. Let them get some dubs, and you know, the New Day has done everything under the sun. I said this in my predictions video, that New Day has done everything to this point. Why not give it to Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn here? Build them up, put them in the tag division, and have them wreck house, and that's what they did here, man. Great matchup. Great, great, great matchup. And uh, yeah, it was just good stuff, man. Two on the night thus far in my predictions. And Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn win in an epic tag team match. Guys, I highly, highly suggest if you miss Stomping Grounds yourself, go back and watch this matchup, please. Next up, guys, we have the United States Championship match between two of my favorite wrestlers, Samoa Joe and Ricochet, going head-to-head -head here, guys. I was super excited for this one in the predictions. I talked about the power of Joe versus the speed and athleticism of Ricochet, and they told a fantastic story in the ring. Both men were selling their butts off. They were looking great. Ricochet just, just looked so good with, with Joe's power and his force and his strength. Going back and forth, man, this was terrific. You can see that, like, Ricochet's athleticism and high-flying offense was just exhausting Joe, and it took him and took him and took him and it took him to the limit and at the end guys hits the 630 and we have a brand new United States champion Ricochet takes the United States championship we talked about it in the predictions I said you know what this is a perfect time to crown Ricochet man this is a perfect time you know Samoa Joe hasn't really done anything with the championship you might as well start over with it make this United States championship prestigious and what a way to do it here I love Joe I love it I mean he, he honestly should be in the further into the main event scene 
but here putting over Ricochet was a great moment and after the matchup man Ricochet goes back to the back and Seth Rollins and and you know a bunch of baby faces were back there congratulating him and Triple H walks up gives him a hug all of them are high-fiving him and clapping for him giving him a round of applause just a beautiful moment man Ricochet tore the house down Samoa Joe tore the house down what a great matchup between both men United States Championship is now on Ricochet and I cannot wait to see where it goes hopefully we do get a good reign and we build this man up it was sort of like a crowning moment man are they going to make Ricochet into the next big star well they should as they sure as hell should Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championship match between the champions Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan taking on Heavy Machinery, Tucker and Otis. And going into this matchup, I didn't have high expectations, especially after the New Day versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn tearing down the house like they did, guys. I didn't have high expectations for this one, but they did surprise me. I'm not the biggest fans of Heavy Machinery. While they do make me laugh time to time, you know, Otis has good charisma and everything. That uh, You know, this this matchup was pretty good. I mean, I enjoyed it. You know, they, they started off a little bit slow but they picked it up you know they were entertaining um i thought that tucker really showed off a lot of his athleticism in this matchup otis was very entertaining with his you know his getting pumped up by the yes kicks the crowd was on fire for this you know they obviously loved daniel bryan and they were popping so hard for him and you know it was totally just not on you know heavy machinery side because they were booing everything they were doing and cheering everything rowan and bryan were doing but this matchup was enjoyable. The end of the matchup came when Tucker uh, jumped off the top rope to the outside, taking out Rowan. And then uh, when he came inside the ring, uh, Daniel Bryan would get him in a schoolboy package or a small package, pinning Tucker and retaining the SmackDown Live Tag Team Championships. Fun little matchup. I enjoyed it, and it was entertaining. You know, it wasn't boring at all. I did find it uh, a good matchup, and it was solid. And uh, I think the right guys won here. I think that they do need to retain. They need to keep those tag titles and, you know, uh, keep them looking good. And this this was a great matchup to showcase what they can do, and they kept the SmackDown Live Tag Team titles relevant in this matchup. So congratulations to Brian and Rowan. Next up, guys, we have the SmackDown Live Women's Championship match between Bayley and Alexa Bliss. One of the matches I wasn't really looking forward to because I am not a big fan of Alexa Bliss. I don't think she's very good in the ring, and I feel like uh, Vince McMahon just sees a pretty face and pushes her to the moon. And that is apparent by her wrestling ability, number one, and number two, you can see by how many championship reigns she's had and how long she's held the championship. But Bayley coming in, guys, I thought it was, um, it was very imperative that she won here tonight versus Alexa Bliss, and she did. I was very excited for that to see her win. It wasn't a completely trash match, but definitely not the... It was the worst match of the night so far between these two women here. And I cannot buy the Nikki Cross, Alexa Bliss storyline. I don't care about it. I'm not invested in it. It makes no sense to me whatsoever. Also, Alexa Bliss is supposed to be a Raw superstar, right? Why is she battling for the Women's Championship on SmackDown Live? I don't know. That's just all the wild card car... The wild card... The wild card rule bullcrap going on. And I don't know, man. Whatever. Bailey does win, thank God. She does retain after a Bailey to Belly after... After the Twisted Bliss was missed, hit the knees, Bailey got the knees up, hit the Bailey to Bailey, one, two, three, Bailey retains, thank Christ, let's uh, let's get her a, a worthy challenger, both women's champions on both brands need worthy challengers now for their championships, give me Ember Moon please. Next up, guys, we have the matchup between the big dog, Roman Reigns, taking on Drew McIntyre with Shane McMahon in his corner, guys. I've been really sick of this feud, you know, going in. Uh, I just, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not invested into it at all. I really don't understand what's going on, why it's happening, all of that good jazz. But anyways, this matchup started off pretty freaking epic, man. It started off fast-paced. It was a lot better. I can say this right off the bat. This matchup was so much better than their WrestleMania 35 matchup. Uh, Roman with a huge dive to the outside over the top rope, taking out McIntyre. And um, from there, it did slow down a little bit. But then towards the end, guys, the last five, six minutes, they totally uh, turned the volume back up. And they, they finished strong, man. I thought that the crowd was into it. I thought that, you know, everybody ate this thing up. And it was it was an entertaining one. I really did enjoy it. Um, the, the, the beginning of the matchup and then the latter half of the matchup was great. Um, it was like sort of like the right after the start to about the middle. I was like, eh, it was kind of slowy. Uh, sort of like their Mania 35 match. But then they turn it on and they finish strong. And Roman Reigns does win after throwing Shaman Man out of the ring, hitting a spear on Drew McIntyre. Some good back and forth in this thing, and Roman Reigns does win. I did predict this, and I think I may be undefeated, maybe. Uh, maybe the Ricochet match I didn't call, but the rest I think I am undefeated on the night in predictions. But this matchup was definitely better than WrestleMania 35, and uh, this show has been a banger so far. 
Next up, guys, we have the WWE Championship match between my boy Dolph Ziggler chasing after Kofi Kingston and his WWE title here in a steel cage match. Obviously, he wanted to use the steel cage to prevent Big E and Xavier Woods from interfering, and I enjoyed this matchup. I love the drama. I love the suspense. You guys know I'm probably the biggest Ziggler fan in the world, and they had me on the edge of my seat multiple times, you know, trying to get that pinfall, trying to escape that cage door. I mean, my God. End of the matchup came when Ziggler was crawling to the edge of the cage door. He's about to crawl out. He's about to crawl out. And out of nowhere, Kofi just leaps out the door to win the matchup. Both feet hit the ground. And, yeah, I mean, it... I knew it was going to happen. I'm not that disappointed because I already set myself up. I already knew that he wasn't going to win. But, you know, it would be nice to just one day, man, just one day, give him that championship gold. It would be so beautiful to see. But, you know, it is what it is, man. What do you do here? Ziggler does come up empty. He does not win the WWE Championship. And, you know what? I'm, I, I'll get over it eventually. Kofi Kingston has looked great in his title run, and I can support him. He's looked great. They booked him strong, and I can support that. And uh, it, it's been a good championship run for him, and it continues here. I'm excited to see who the next challenger will be because I can't imagine Dolph Ziggler getting another rematch after this. And so it'll be interesting to see for sure who challenges Kofi and where my boy Dolph Ziggler goes from this point on. But Kofi does win in a nice little steel cage match here at Stomping Grounds. And for our main event, ladies and gentlemen, we had the Universal Championship match between my boy, the Beast Slayer, Seth freaking Rollins, taking on Trash Corbin with a special guest referee, guys. And, you know, we were all wondering, we were like, is it going to be Brock Lesnar? Is it going to be Paul Heyman? Is it going to be Gilbert? Is it going to be Doink the Clown? Who the hell is it going to be? And, my God, guys, it was Lacey freaking Evans. And when they said that, I literally genuinely laughed out loud because I was like, who in the hell booked this crap right here? So, Lacey Evans is a special guest referee. We get a... We get like a crap matchup all the way up till the end. I could literally see this coming from a mile away, guys. I tweeted about it. I literally could see it from like 70 miles away. As soon as Lacey Evans was, you know, announced, I was like, oh my god, Becky Lynch is going to come out, beat up Lacey Evans, Seth Rollins will retain, and then we're going to get, at Extreme Rules, we're going to get a mixed tag team matchup for both the Universal title and the Raw Women's Championship, Seth Rollins and Becky versus Trash Corbin and Lacey Evans, and that's literally two of my favorite wrestlers in the world versus two of my least favorite. Pretty crazy stuff. But uh, that's what I think is going to happen. End of the matchup came when uh, Becky Lynch came out, beat the hell out of Lacey Evans. I mean, there were some cool spots. Don't get me wrong. I thought the power bomb through the announce table was excellent on Trash Corbin. I thought his choke slam to Seth was pretty nice. There were some decent little moments during the matchup that I found entertaining. But overall, I just took myself completely out of it when uh, all this junk was announced and we had all this crap. But anyways, the end of the matchup came. Uh, Becky Lynch beat up Lacey Evans. And then uh, the other referees come out there. And it ends up being the referee, uh, Nicholas's dad, I can't remember his name, comes out. The referee that apparently screwed Trash Corbin at Super Showdown was the referee. I thought that was hilarious how Trash Corbin looked at the ref like, oh my god, are you fucking serious? Goes for the end of days on Seth. Very cool sequence right here. Uh, goes for the end of days. Seth does a backflip, lands, super kicks Trash Corbin's head off, curb stomp into the turf, flips him over, one, two, three, and Seth Rollins retains with Becky Lynch at his side, and my god, this great show had to end on a relationship angle, and I do not like that. I don't like this relationship angle that they take. Just leave the stuff out of it, man. If they were married, it'd be one thing, but just to be dating and all this, man, you never know what could happen, but... You know, uh, I mean, I, I really liked Stomping Grounds, guys. I mean, going in, I did not think this matchup or this show was going to be very good because uh, it was a, just a bunch of rematches. And uh, I, I, I don't know. I found myself entertained thoroughly throughout. Great matches here and there. I mean, the uh, the tag team match, the Cruiserweight match, the Ricochet and Joe match, and uh, the, the other tag team match was good as well. I mean, we had a great show here tonight. I enjoyed it. The Steel Cage match was pretty solid. I mean, yeah, Ziggler lost, but it was a creative way to end the matchup, at least. I really liked the jump through the cage door there. And I don't know. Pretty good show, man. I would love to know your thoughts on Stomping Grounds down below, guys, but uh, Seth Rollins is still your Universal Champion. I don't know what's missing from Seth Rollins' Universal title reign right now and Kofi Kingston. Both of them are missing a really big heel to, to submit themselves as a really good babyface. Like, we love Kofi. He's super over. We love Seth. He's super over. Both of them are missing a key heel who's really good at what they do. We need big-time heels to take on these guys. Not guys like Trash Corbin and, you know, just a, a, a jobber Ziggler. Like, we need something big. We need somebody booked right 
and uh, that is what both of them are seriously missing in their title reigns. If we had that, guys, I think that the TV and everything would be a lot better, but that is going to do it for your Stomping Grounds review and results, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Please let me know what you thought of the review and of Stomping Grounds down in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.